Hello everyone. Yeah, you see a model in front of me. This is going to be an out-of-box review. I do not intend to build this anytime soon. Uh, my build queue is very, very long right now. I'll explain that at the end. This is going to be kind of an out-of-box review, short channel update. Just to give you guys an idea of what's going on with my channel and what I'm up to. Um, explain this. This is an older model, but I won it in a contest. Busy Matt had a space shuttle contest to honor the end of the space shuttle. This was one of the prizes. I placed second in the adult division. And I won a Tamiya 1100 Space Shuttle Orbiter. So let me open up the box. We'll talk our way through what's inside the box, and I'll show you what's up with this kit. I really liked this kit when I first got it. First thing we're going to talk about is the directions. Now, I'm trying to keep this video short, under 15 minutes, so I'm going to go through this stuff fairly fast. The directions are purely in Japanese. There's very, very little English in there. There is some, but most of it is sketchy. Okay? Now, too bad I don't read Japanese, because there's a lot of Japanese in here talking about the space shuttle itself, giving us some facts and stuff. The little bit of English that was on the front talked about... Um, that they had full cooperation with Rockwell, the people who built the space shuttle. So they had access to blueprints and stuff like that. So this thing's probably fairly accurate. Okay. The directions are a booklet style. We have putting the, together the main hull. We have the cockpit. There are decals for the cockpit and the instrument panels. The cockpit's a little bare to my taste. I might have to jazz that up when I go to build this. The next page talks about the engines. Here it gives it a full engine uh, plumbing diagram and shows how to assemble the engines. It looks like the engines wiggle around a little bit because you screw them in. Okay? And I remember reading that someplace, the kit review of this model, that the engines would rotate some. That there was some give and take in the engines. And then we're talking about putting together the cargo bay here and the landing gear. And then we got more facts. We got a painting color guide. We got putting the wings together. Um, it looks like you can put the bay doors up or down. Yep, you got the option of putting the bay doors up or down. I like that. Last last couple of airplanes I built didn't give you that option. Okay, the flaps move on this model. And it gives you some warnings about how to put the wings together. It's also got the European Space Lab that goes inside of it. And there's a robot arm, you Canada people. It came with a robot arm. And it gives you some warnings about putting the, bay, the cargo bay doors on there. Display stand, decal guide. It only comes with decals for the Columbia or Enterprise. That tells you how old this is. And painting guide on the back. Now let's start talking about the parts out of the box. I'm just going to pull it one screw at a time. Some of these I'll talk about longer than others. Here we have the color parts. They're molded in blue. All the screw bags are open when I got it. Here we have the main windshield. It's a little scuffed up, but it's not scratched. That can be dealt with. Next up, we're going to come with the cargo bay. And this does have the secondary rocket thrusters on it and some little tiny parts. Bad problem with the cargo bay. Lots of pin marks inside the cargo bay that are going to have to be dealt with. Some of these pin marks up here where we got radiator fins are in really bad locations. Really bad. Because you're going to be sanding them working around. Yeah, you guys can see that in there. You're going to have to remove those pin marks around these ribs. So that's going to be a bit of fun. And you can see the pin marks right there. Most of this model does not have pin marks, which surprised me. Now one thing about this you're going to have the space lab there. So that will obscure a lot of that. Here's the nose of the shuttle right here. Now one thing I don't like is there's no tile detail. None. Zero. On any of this. These, these are the rear thruster covers and there are heavily tiled areas on the ship. So let me back this back out so we can see me while I'm talking. Put that aside. Up next is the one piece of chrome. This is for the radiators in the um, cargo bay so they can cool the ship. Or, yeah, cool the ship basically. The chrome works very well done on those. It's pretty crisp. Um, few problems here and there. There's a scratch mark on one, so I might have to strip them and redo it. Not that big of a deal. 
Here's the main rear stabilizer on this sprue. Let's zoom in a little bit so it fills the full screen. All right, landing gear, you can see them. The landing gear look good to me. There's no tread detail on the wheels. Go, that's not a surprise. I remember reading somewhere how you can put tread detail in there. I'm gonna have to look that up again. But you guys can get a good look at the sprue. Let's do the flip side. There are some pin marks in the stabilizers, but they don't show on the outside, which is fine with me. I don't care if there's pin marks where I don't, will never have to deal with them. All right, so there's that piece of sprue. Here's the big piece of sprue with the engine bells and the ribbing on the engine bells and the fabulous cockpit right here, along with the two astronauts that come with this kit. Those astronauts are weak, really weak. They don't have arms. I mean, seriously, take a look at that. Does that guy have arms? Not really. He doesn't have any arms whatsoever. All right. But here, you again, you can see the detail. This is for the space lab right here. All these thin little delicate parts over here for the space lab. And there's the robot arm, Canada people. And I'm only saying that because the last space shuttle I built, there were comments about the Canada robot arm on it. So, one of the space shuttle models I built. So, I had to make a comment about that. But you can't do people like your robot arm. I can't blame you for that. Kitten, don't play with AIDS. Alright, we're getting down to the last couple of sets of sprues here. We have the main shuttle body itself. It does have panel lines and stuff on it which is good. This is the, all of this and here's the space lab. But again, there are tile details in places on here, but not, not on the main body, sorry. We'll get that with the wings in a minute. But there's no tile detail on the underside. I went looking for tile decals and I just can't find any. Here we come with almost the last sprue of the model. The main wings themselves. And again, there are tile details along the wings. And let me start twisting them in the light so you can see that. Yeah, you can see them when I hit it in the light just right. There are tile details around the leading edge of the wings and along the top surface of the wing along here, like there should be. But on the underside, there's nothing. And I don't understand that. Why did they put them on the top side of the wing where they should be and not on the underside of the wing? And not on the main stabilizer in the back. It makes no sense to me that they did this. I mean, why do you not have your tile details everywhere? Especially when you went through the trouble of making a fairly detailed model kit. All right, we're down to one last, two last sprues here. I have to fight the kitten for him. He thinks they're they his. Uh, copper rod and some screws. The screws to attach the engine so you can move the engines around. And the decal set. The decal set looks like it's in pretty good shape for all this time. Okay, I did find some aftermarket decals to replace this with. JBot makes some aftermarket decals for this part. Okay, and I may pick them up. I may not. I gotta look and see what he's got. All right, because he probably has better decals than this. The new edition of this model has much better decals than this. Go figure. So I'll probably go looking for some aftermarkets. If I can find some tile decals, I'll be in heaven with this thing. Now, quick channel update. All right, I'm working on a lighting tutorial for the Millennium Falcon. A lot of you are aware of that. You've seen the videos on LEDs and um, tools you need. The next one up is going to be different types of lighting for like warp engines and things like that. Then after that, soldering will be this, up a few days after that. And then the timing chip one will be a few days after that. I'm going to rush those because the group build starts October 1st. And i got to start building that Millennium Falcon on day one practically. I'm also going to be putting up a lighting plan for the Millennium Falcon sometime really soon. So there's going to be a lot of videos coming out me soon. I apologize for that. I don't like flooding you guys with videos. But there's a deadline and that's why I'm doing it. Brockiri Cruiser, Deslox Command Cruiser. They've been put on hold because of this. I promised to do this lighting tutorial a month ago. I thought I'd have them done. Work has so gotten in the way. I've got a four day weekend starting tonight. If you count tonight, it's kind of like four and a half days. I got a four day weekend. I'm going to get a lot done. I'm going to work on them. They're not being put completely on the back burner. 
part of the reason I was waiting is I was waiting for some Mr. Dissolve putty. I got it now. So I can finish the putty video. Once I evaluate the Mr. Dissolve putty, the putty conclusion will be up. And I'll get working on these things again. You can see the Brock Erie Cruiser sitting right here. I've done a lot of work on her. The seams are almost done. Once those seams are done, I've got one, two, three, four parts left. Scratch build the cannons. She's ready for paint. So she's actually fairly close to the painting stage. Deslox Command Cruiser needs a teeny bit more seam filling and it'll be ready for the painting stage. Just a matter of time on those. It's just a couple hours on Deslox, a couple hours on that, and I can start putting them together and paint won't be far behind. Now, I said I got a long building queue, so let's run through this really quick. I got those two going. They are getting finished. Dang it. It's one of those things. They're not going to be shelf queens. They're getting finished. I'm going to get into the Millennium Falcon, and it's going to be built fairly regularly because I'm just going to kind of hammer through it until it's done tying these up. If I finish the Millennium Falcon up, then I'm going to pull out the Martian War Machine and finish it up. It's about a quarter of the way done, a third of the way done. It won't take me long to finish from here. I stopped on it because I realized that I was in over my head on it. It is not over my head now. I've got much better skills than I had two years ago when I got back in this hobby. Um, once the Martian War Machine's done, I'm going back to the Enterprise NX. I need to get that done. I'm going to start forgetting parts about it. The lighting tutorials have helped me a lot because I haven't done lighting in a while. And the circuits I'm going to be reviewing, the flasher circuits, I used all of them in the NX. I've scratch built every single flasher circuit in that model. So we'll be getting back into that. Once the NX is done, it'll be big spring contest time again. Now I got some plans for that. I'm ordering parts, ordering models, setting up my plans early. All right, so there you go. Small channel update, letting you know what's going on. Hope you enjoyed the out of box review. Well, if you guys didn't enjoy the out of box review, the kitten enjoyed the inbox review. He's reviewing the box of the space shuttle. Oop! Now he found a cord to play with. Just to let you guys see, he's growing. He's about eight pounds now at four and a half weeks. He's going to be a monster.